hey guys, I'm starting to start back up this whole poll thing where I put a poll out the day before and asked what you guys want for a video and make a video related to that. So for today, I'm going to be going over the new attacker kind of stacking meta, so to speak. This has been kind of occurring mostly since the patch change where people have gotten a little bit of extra HP. I don't think a lot of people have really thought about why it's happening, but everyone's definitely felt the, the shift, it seems like, at, the, at least the higher level wars, where everyone's starting to stack point a lot more because people are dying less to detonates. Uh, how this actually works out, if I go over, so this would be like the, the old strat. I want to go over like a, a mock roster, though, for like kind of the, the current play style if you will usually there's two point groups there's four quad groups there they play in quadrants on the outsides of the point so if you were to draw a circle they one of them would play at this top right one would be at this top left bottom left bottom right uh, usually they kind of end up near each other though on those points and kind of work around each other uh, then there's usually two flex groups that kind of work together on the edge and there's two other flex groups that work together on another edge the seven and eight group slot has kind of a been variable as of recent where how, how people have played it some people have tried to figure out a way to stack the point more some people have figured out ways to stack the outsides more uh, this is kind of a hybrid setup that i made here where some people go for great x warhammers just to kind of have a front line slash pressure space uh, they drop the igvg they put, have the great x warhammers kind of play with others more so and then they have uh, great swords with fire staffs, they have great swords with fire staffs. The other groups, they have bows together with a great sword to kind of lead and fire staff to follow up. That kind of combination between great sword and fire staff still exists, but it's a lot less uh, scary than it used to be in terms of the great sword side. That being said, fire staffs, I think, are getting a little bit more popular because they take less resources than a great sword, do more damage than a great sword now, and are just like very consistently good on a lot of aspects of point due to the kind of burnout deto. As troll as that is, like, those burnout dead like, hero Superman plays are actually able to kind of carry in most aspects of the game. It is, like, borderline suicide uh, at times, but at the same time, if you time it correctly, you can just literally wipe clumps for free. And it's something that you're starting to see a little bit more, at least in NA. EU has been doing it for a very long time at this point. Uh, NA, again, is behind on the EU meta and is playing catch-up, but this is, like, kind of how it's been. Uh, that, that being said, for Supple, they've kind of created their own meta, so I don't know if I could really say that confidently about them, but Dropouts is definitely at least playing catch-up, and it feels like every other company is either ignoring the EU shift, and then loses to companies that have like a softly implemented EU strat, or they just, uh, or, or they have tried to kind of copy this. So this is like the, the old uh, EU strat that people were doing probably a month and a half to two months ago, where there was a very little people on the point, uh, there's people controlling the outside of the point. These are the quad groups. They're playing kind of tightly knit. And then there's a group outside of those that was controlling the lane on the, the opposite of those. This is how Guanzo Goats plays, if you guys have paid attention to New World League at all. Uh, this, this is like how they've defaulted the play. This is like the old style. This has been kind of revamped a few times and has changed a bit. And you've seen Guanzo's Goats struggle a little bit more with the newer style because it plays less for the outside control and it plays more for the inside control, which is something that is a little bit more difficult to play with how their comp is, has, was originally set up. But this is the, the base idea for it, where you'd control this edge. Uh, you would kind of wrap your army slowly into their backline. And once your army got into their backline, uh, then you would nuke the point. The point gets nuked, people die. Uh, you, you just kind of win off of that over time. Uh, this is kind of the the more recent version of that. That was probably before the patch, like how people defaulted to playing, where they would have quad groups play like relatively tight to point. They're in theory supposed to be on and off the point at all times. In reality, a lot of quad groups just played off the point completely the whole time. Uh, so this mindset has changed a bit, but the idea behind this is you want to control the space, and then once you have your space controlled, then you're going to go help point. Uh, in theory, this makes a lot of sense. In reality, it felt like that you were just a little bit off point, and you can do the basically the same job off point as you could be doing on point for the most part. There are times where you definitely need to step off the point to go help uh, off off point fights, but it felt like people could easily be on point a lot more than that they were. And often times you would see like a group of five people swinging on one person and just like in general getting very little value while the point team was just getting completely stomped by like a 15 to 20 v 10 fight. 
Uh, this still occurs with some companies, like 15k kind of plays this way, where they just kind of leave the point team out to dry. I'm going to call out my own company for that. We had a fight on B yesterday that was a 20v10 for the majority of the war, and that was very annoying to play versus, and we didn't really adjust be because of it, nor we were able to, to kind of pull it out because of the people that played on that, that point sod point squad were kind of more veteran players but it's something that i would say is just very high pressure for your point team uh it does help you control space it helps your healers live a little bit more so that's a big plus side but you just in general with this idea you kind of win very very slow it feels like you have to win a hard fight then you have to win another hard fight and sometimes even a third hard fight before you take a point with this kind of style because you're just so slow to be taking the point and for that reason this kind of style has starting to fall out of favor for styles that play to win point a little bit faster and then from there kind of snowball the advantage this is kind of the the thing that's been coming up as of recent we've had these quad groups which i'll go back to for a second uh, sorry for the blinding light, uh, but you have your quad groups default to playing on the actual point itself. The exception is like the BBIG won't exactly be on the point, but they'll be playing the edge. The fire staff will be off the point, they'll be playing the edge. Uh, but everyone else is going to be playing like as a default on the point, and then they're going to be playing to control their space as a secondary. If people kind of move up into their space, they're going to step off a point to help the off point fight, but they're not necessarily going to be forcing trying to help the off point fight early on. And that's kind of the adaptation and the shift that has been made. So the point fights are much more clumpy now. It feels like in most wars, as of recent, there is a pretty consistent like 15 to 30 people on point. Some companies have up to 40 people on point. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going that far, but I'd say 15 to 30 is sort of the new norm. Not at all times, but like at least on and off the point, 15 to 30. But almost at all times, there's going to be at least 15 people on point. Sometimes there's 20 people on point, and sometimes it gets a lot more than that when it's like 75, 80% tick, but that's pretty standard practice. So the base idea is you want to stack the point uh, and win off of that tick. This is also translated to like a different fort meta itself. I have here the old fort setup that people have been using for like the last two months. Uh, this is like pretty standard practice where people would stack the A gate, they stack the C gate. Uh, EU does not run it this way. They played to, to stack the, the B a lot more. They had a m much heavier B fight and NA has once again fallen behind and now is finally taking the, the time to realize that EU is probably right on that, which is annoying uh, for people that are preaching to kind of move towards that style but the base idea here of like how it changed is people sometimes default to having people out wide here but then they instead of holding their lanes out wide and pushing in with this 15 man they'll bring a group from out wide into b and then they'll push from there this capitalizes a lot on the defenders that do not calm a lot of the times people will not actually calm within their army if they're not a shot caller so this rotation will not be calm people will be late to rotating to b and then from there kind of chaos ensues it's a very easy rotation a pretty easy rotation to disguise as well because all you have to do is hang out on this like kind of edge here a lot of the times i'm the end one that ends up calling it out for a lot of the companies i'm in as the b player seeing people rotate from the sides onto b so it's something that's like easier to spot if you're looking for it but if you're not looking for it you could very very easily miss it this results in a b like kind of push where the first two groups on b will try to push early to make space so there's not like a giant clump in this choke fight and then from there they'll have reinforcements kind of crash through b behind them and kind of clean up anyone there that lived the initial uh detonates kind of push and then from there people are just going to push out take space these other groups on the side because they're outnumbered they're just going to play the hold spaces first as space is taken they're going to come in and then from there uh, people are going to try to push up as far as they can in order to have respawns kind of flood through that b gate a little bit more uncontested than they might be otherwise so this is like kind of an it's been i want to say it's like a newer strat uh but it's a strat that's kind of been repopularized by the amount of damage that you're actually able to live at the current moment doing to the increase in hp and the decrease in damage that that has been doing because it's not critting and when it doesn't crit, you don't have those annoying circumstances where Detonate crits. That crit ignores Brazil, and it does a huge chunk of damage to your HP. Detonate is still by far the meta for, for point and for off point, and is the seems like the only thing in the game that's able to do consistent enough damage to actually secure a majority of kills right now. But unless you're like kind of doing like some insane like quote unquote dogging strats where you're looking to have like ten, five to ten people all target one person at the same time uh but 
this has kind of been what spawned off of that, and people are in general playing a little bit more clumped. I would say Warhammer is getting a bit more potent around the point. You see a lot of people going for half heavies with Warhammer to land Plague Strikes. People are trying to figure out ways to increase the amount of damage that they're doing so that people are more likely to die. But overall, because of the changes, people have been a lot more tankier. This has allowed people to ball up more and Zerg a little bit harder than they might have been able to otherwise. So where otherwise, we would see people default to be more spread out and then come to point for a crash. Now people are playing on point. They're trying to absorb the crash or they're or they're trying to create a play off of that crash actually happening. And overall, this has resulted in a more clumpy meta, and I'd say overall it's a little bit more fun of a meta uh, to play right now. Uh, this roster, I wouldn't say, is perfect for the, the last four groups, but the other groups are like pretty spot on the current moment. BBIG is still being played, at least in NA. Uh, people are doing consistent enough damage with that in light for it to see value. A lot of people have been playing it in the kind of a weird fashion where they play almost in the other team's backline at the current moment as sort of a healer, uh, assassin slash killer. It's a build that seems to fall over very easily if it, if it gets focused, in my opinion. But for some reason, it's not commonly punished, at least by NA bruisers. So uh, I think EU bruisers are kind of ahead on that by a, a, a decent margin. And overall... It's a, a build that gets a surprisingly amount of value in wars where people are not looking to punish it. So this has kind of been the, the shift as a whole. I would say fire gems are kind of in order, are, are a good thing to be trying to run in this current meta. SNS and Greatsword just have not been hitting as hard. They seem to not be as scary as they once were with the changes to how Stam work. And because they have less dodges, they're also losing the battle to range a little bit harder. So Fire Staff has kind of taken that one of those spots for Great Sword. Great Sword still obviously has a role, but it is like less of a you just go this build and you win off point role. And you you see less of the old meta where people are running like eight to eight plus Great Swords in a single army. That's like kind of fallen off. You you see it more along the lines of like kind of like four to six at the current moment would be the the norm for the amount of Great Swords that I'm seeing at least in NA. Uh, EU, it may be a little bit higher. This is an example of five. Sometimes you see a little bit more than that, but you get the idea. So let me know what you guys think about this. I think the, the meta overall is getting a little bit more clumpier. It's a little bit more fun to play from a war perspective, in my opinion, but uh, for the people that are not in wars, you probably have not really felt this in OPRs because, because I'm pretty sure OPRs are still heavily uh, ranged focused in terms of fire staff bows and even blunderbuss, just kind of like those ranged uh, weapons, like even musket. You see muskets even now being starting to get played, but I don't think they're really having that much success. So I'll see you guys later. Peace.